Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. Before we dive into this week's episode, I wanted to share that my NBCC CEU provider application is currently being reviewed. Right now, my pod courses are approved by the South Carolina Licensing Board. So if you're licensed in South Carolina as an LPC or LMFT, you are good to go. Be sure to grab your first continuing education contact hour on me for free. Head to my site and enter your email for a code that gives you your first pod course for free. Right now, I have four pod courses to choose from, a little something for everyone. Then you enter the code at checkout and the pod course is yours. Listen to the episode, take the quiz, fill out the evaluation form, and download your certificate of completion. I'm here to help walk you through it if you need any support. Okay, now for an intro on today's guest. David Waltenbaugh is a co-founder and the CEO of Root VR, a platform of therapeutic and educational virtual reality tools to promote and support pediatric, adolescent, and young adult mental health, helping children from adverse home environments to better adapt to change and ultimately become well-adjusted and highly contributing community members, while also training and educating parents and caretakers to better understand and accommodate these children. In addition to David's specific work with Root VR, he is building a network of research partners, advisors, and creative developers to further explore novel applications of virtual and augmented reality in medicine, healthcare, therapy, and education with Media Plural, an immersive media production and strategy startup focused on VR for good. David and I met late last year when we both were finalists in the inaugural Virginia Commonwealth University, go Rams, alumni pitch competition. David's pitch for Root VR took home the grand prize. His mission and vision for helping kids has been crystal clear in every conversation we've had, and I'm excited to have him on the show so you can learn more about his therapeutic tools and how you can get involved. A really cool thing happened just a few weeks ago. The app Home, H-O-M, by Root VR is now available for purchase on the Apple App Store. And you guys, I got it. It's super cool. And it's coming to the Google Play Store as well. David is continually interested in partnering with clinicians and organizations on pilot programs in anticipation of the official commercial rollout later this year. Anyone who's interested can contact him at info at rootvirtualreality.com. All right, let's jump into the show. Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Therapy Show. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. And on today's show, I have my friend David Waltenbaugh. We connected just a few months ago uh, in 2019 when we both applied for the Virginia Commonwealth University Alumni Pitch Competition, the inaugural event. And he and I met through that process. And he is not a therapist. I want to go ahead and say that now because you guys know that that's kind of my mission is to bring other therapists on. But the work that he is doing is so exciting, is so innovative, and is so incredible for a therapist to know about. And so I want to um, welcome him to the show. Welcome, David. It's awesome to have you here. Yeah, thanks so much. It's great to be here. Oh, gosh, you're welcome. So let's kind of back it up a little bit. I've shared a little bit about my journey to podcasting and the a pitch competition, but can you share your journey? I know this is a really big question, but can you share your journey to how you got to where you are today and tell us what it is that you're doing? Maybe start with that first. Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. So a little bit over a year ago, I started a, a company called Root VR, and we are building a platform of virtual reality-based therapy tools for adolescent mental health professionals. Yeah. And so it's been a long and, and, and strange journey to, to get here. And I'm actually glad that you went ahead and, and put out the disclaimer that I'm not a therapist because, you know, I listened to your show and, you know, I was going through and looking at everybody who is who was on there before me and it was like, you know, a therapist, 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 clinician. And I was like, all right, well, I'm not that. So my, my background with mental health actually comes from being on the other side of the, the couch, so to speak. You know, I, I, I've been a benefactor of therapy for, you know, the entirety of my, my adult life. 
but yeah, so to, so to kind of get where, where I am today, you know, I don't have a background in therapy and, you know, health or wellness. I actually went to school for a business degree, got out of school, went into to investments and worked in investments for actually a little bit over a decade. And, you know, it was interesting. It didn't take me a full decade to realize that that wasn't going to be the thing that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I was always, I had always been looking for something to do that was a little bit more creative, a little bit more gratifying, and something that I just felt good about the fact that I was doing, you know, I wanted to do work that was helping other people. And so I spent a lot of time kind of searching on how to, how to do that. I, you know, I mentioned to you earlier that for a while I thought I was going to be, you know, like a recording engineer and, that, you know, I'm a big music fan. So I was, thought I was going to be producing records for the rest of my life. And, you know, even when I was pursuing that, something was missing. And, you know, what I started to realize as, as I got older and started a family and started really asking some serious questions about myself, I started to realize that, you know, I, I have an, a, an affinity for people who, you know, are just, are just struggling and, and are in hard places in their life. And, you know, that kind of, I think, goes back to my, my own personal history with, with mental health. And so when I was 17... I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety and, and major depression. Um, and it sort of came out of nowhere. I kind of thought I had a, you know, like a picture perfect childhood. And then my senior year of, of high school hit and it was just sort of like I just kind of got sidelined. And, you know, it's something that honestly I've dealt with and managed for the entirety of my my adult life. It's, you know, it's not something that I'm, I'm cured of or, you know, you know, things are perfect. But as I got older and got more comfortable with managing my health and wellness, but also with kind of sharing my my story with other people, I started realizing that just the nature of uh, advocating and, and talking about what I'm going through was, seemed helpful for people. And so over the last five years, when I was kind of going through this kind of personal journey of figuring out what was next for me, I, I started to realize, particularly when I was talking to, to parents, who, you know, were starting to talk to me about, about their kids who had, had been, you know, sort of starting to show some symptoms of whether it's anxiety or, or depression or, or, you know, what have you, I started to realize that just from sharing my experience and, and, and sharing what I've learned over the years, it seemed to give people some hope. And so, you know, I had been really interested in finding a way to, to use that, use my experience to help other people. But, you know, I knew that if I wanted to be a therapist, I'd have to go back to school and, you know, didn't want to do that. And then, you know, sort of out of nowhere, this virtual reality thing came, you know, I stumbled upon it and all the research that's been done in it. And it was just sort of like this amazing opportunity to you know, just kind of pursue something new and find a way that I could really kind of use my interests and my skills and my experiences to help people. So that's kind of what, what led me to, to do it. And I, I made the leap about a year ago and started the company and, and, you know, kind of just grinding away at it ever since. It's a really inspiring story and it's really amazing. And I, th I think your story is a theme in a lot of people's lives. You know, we and I think about my own career path and how I got to be where I am today. And, you know, it's not an uncommon process or parallel process. It's sure. not. It's everybody just has, takes a different path to getting there. And we all have stuff that we've dealt with in our lives that mold us and impact us. And thank you for sharing about your story and what happened yeah. at 17. It's really, really inspiring and very incredible to see how you've taken that experience and used it for good, you know, in helping sure, other people. Sure. Okay. So I understand not wanting to go back to school and being a therapist. It's a lot of work and it's <laughs> yeah, a, yeah. a lot of money. It's funny. <laughs> I actually looked at, at VCU for the counseling program oh, yeah. after I graduated, but I wasn't ready to be a counselor. Like I've always kind of had in the back of my mind. It took me a while to get to be a counselor in my path, you know, to getting here. So I just think that's interesting because I talked yeah. to a lot of therapists and we all have like a story of how we got to be where we are today. So, sure. okay. So you started this a year ago. Like you've come so far in a year. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it has been, I, you know, I think in part, you know, it's, it's really a, a labor of love. And I think it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I had admittedly been unhappy with what I had been doing for, for so long that when I, and I had at the same time been searching for what, whatever, you know, kind of the, the right thing was. And, you know, time will tell if, if what I'm doing now is that right thing. But 
this has felt so good that it's just been, you know, the process hasn't been easy, but for me to get passionate about it and to kind of pour myself into it that part of it has has been easy yeah. so so i when i originally started root vr so my my interest in in using vr technology kind of for good you know actually dated back to about 18 months before i started the the company when i first started to kind of discover that there was this whole world of applications of virtual reality technology outside of entertainment. You know, mm -hmm. five years ago when I started reading about virtual reality, my, my thinking was, well, oh, okay, so like this is going to be the next video game system. I have kids now. I don't have time to play video games, you know? And so I was, I was a huge skeptic really just a few years ago. And and, you know, at the same time, I'm sort of, I'm a little bit of a, I'm a little bit of a nerd and, you know, I'm a little bit of a, I'm just intellectually curious about stuff like that. So I started reading about it and kind of just accidentally stumbled onto this work that has been done really over the past 20 years in using virtual reality for psychological and, and, you know, therapeutic applications and was just absolutely blown away mm -hmm. by some of the work that's been done and some of the, some of the, the research and the results that are coming. I mean, there, and I, I always kind of feel like I have to give a shout out to like some of the, really the pioneers of, of this work, you know, but there are some folks in, you know, a lot of the major research institutions around the country, a lot of the universities, um, Skip Rizzo at University of Southern California. He's kind of like my hero. It's funny growing up, my heroes were always like Jimi Hendrix and all these rock stars. But like now Skip Rizzo has done so much amazing work in this field and is such an inspiration to me. But Walter Greenleaf and Jeremy Balenson at Stanford, Barbara Rothbaum at Emory University, all these amazing people who literally saw the potential of this technology in uh, applications like exposure therapy and you know cognitive behavioral therapy and so when I, I I discovered that and it just completely changed my understanding of you know what was possible with you know kind of the future of therapy but also what was possible in, in me being a relatively tech savvy and a, and a creative person and being able to find a way to work in the field you know, maybe in an ancillary or non-traditional, you know, non-traditional way, but to be able to contribute with the skills and the interests that I, that I have. So, you know, it dated back a, a long time, but then it was just sort of like once I, I, I sat on the idea for about, you know, about a year and kind of tried to figure out the, the right application. And then just after having enough conversations, you know, just kind of decided that uh, adolescent mental health was, was a place that I think is just ripe with opportunity mm -hmm. for this technology to make to be really transformational. Oh yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And thank you for kind of giving us the background as to, you know, the the researchers out there who are showing that this is a vetted and now sure. least well researched scientific approach to help people. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's kind of get into the nitty gritty of yeah. what it looks like. And, and how did you I mean, because you you're not a therapist. So like how did you who did you work with to like help you with the framework, I guess. Yeah, sure. So when I, you know, and I, I've, I've been careful. So the, the company is still admittedly, you know, relatively early stage. So we just, I just finished, kind of put the finishing touches on what is sort of the kind of early stage pilot platform. And I admittedly for the early stage of the platform, admittedly kind of used what I consider to be some of the low hanging fruit, you know, things that, Things that I've learned, uh, so techniques, coping mechanisms, you know, things that I've learned about therapy just from learning them over the past, you know, you know, decade or more, um, because I really want, I didn't want to assume that I, I knew, you know, that I was a clinical, that I had the expertise to really, to do the real clini clinical work. So the way, the way that I've kind of set up the initial platform is, you know, a handful of kind of commonly used tools or interventions or coping mechanisms that are, that are taught with, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy and exposure therapy and things, simple things like deep breathing, guided imagery, sort of general relaxation and positive affirmation, you know, so all of those kind of bread and butter things that are, you know, evidence-based and that are shown to be incredibly effective. 
but in that respect, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not breaking any molds. That being said, I have been incredibly fortunate to have a handful of clinicians. So I'm in Richmond, Virginia, a handful of clinicians in Richmond, Virginia, who have kind of seen the, the, potential for the technology early on and have been advising me both on kind of the current experiences that, that I've been building to date, but also in kind of planning the roadmap for the future of the platform. Mm-hmm. So the idea with the platform is to kind of pick a number of kind of interventions that are pretty commonly used and not trying to revolutionize therapy or cut the therapy. Certainly, and this is one thing that I always have to say is I am in no way trying to cut the therapist out of the therapy because that is such an absolutely critical part. But I'm trying to create basically what, what I hope will be more powerful versions of some of the interventions that therapists are already using with their clients so that they can feel more more empowered and they can hopefully get better results faster and then also kind of collect the data and the analytics to inform the overall experience so that it's really a kind of wraparound support system for everyone from the children to the families to the therapists to the communities you know at large yeah and i think that's awesome i have to be honest with you though because you know before i talked to you before i understood what root vr was all about you know my therapist brain was like Oh no, please don't think that this is going to replace like a therapist role because I, you know, sure. we're all, we, we go to that place sometimes of like, well, how will, will we still remain relevant, you know, for folks. Right. But I quickly understood when I saw your presentation and talked with you and got my own fear out of the way that this is, <laughs> this is supposed to be a tool for therapists to have in their their toolbox, like we all have tools, you know, all therapists yeah, have yeah. different approaches and different styles. And we know that a number of techniques can work for a variety of people. So it's always wonderful to know what's out there, what's coming, because this is the future. Like there's other yeah. things that's co- that are coming too that are um, like on the forefront yeah. that I'm exposed to. And I'm just like, whoa. And it's not meant to replace therapy. It's meant to bolster it and to help yeah. it be more effective. So I know that some of my therapist friends listening might be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, no, yeah. no, guys, it's okay. It's okay. He's here, yeah, I, He's here to I'm make sure, our jobs, yeah. you know, better and, um, yeah. you know, give us more tools for our, our toolbox. So I just think that is, is so exciting. And so you're in like this first round of, I guess, do you call them lessons? Are they experienced? experiential tool? Like, how do you describe it? Yeah. So, so generally kind of in, in the, the strictly kind of virtual reality, you know, verbiage, people tend to talk about them. And I think it's to reduce the, the connection with gaming, but talk to them about experiences. Mm -hmm. So I talk about them as, as experiences. um, And I also kind of talk to them to talk about them as, you know, interventions or, or modules. So I'm kind of taking a modular approach and thinking about, you know, right now, maybe, uh, you know, so when the, when the current form of the pilot platform has basically four modules or, or four interventions, and, you know, I'd like to get that up to, you know, half a dozen or a dozen different interventions that, you know, kind of have a variety of applications. So right now I've got a deep breathing experience. I have a guided imagery experience, a, a sort of purely relaxation-based experience, which which in reality is, you know, gui- based on guided imagery. And then kind of just the positive, kind of playful, positive emotional activation experience. And, and you know, the way that I see this kind of modular approach is that within each of those interventions, right now I have one experience, but within each of those interventions, you know, there could be half a dozen to a dozen different experiences that, you know, everybody learns differently. And there's a a big element coming from my perspective in therapy where it's, you know, being taught the, the strategies and being taught these techniques and then having to learn them and practice them. There's a big educational component to, to the, to when I'm thinking about building these. So for example, in the, the deep breathing experience, when I went to my first therapist at, at 17, I was super nervous, you know, didn't really get it. And right out of the gate, we started talking about, about deep breathing. Now, you know, when I, I'm twice the age I was then, I, I understand deep breathing. I use it. It's incredibly effective. But then I didn't understand it. It, it made me feel uncomfortable. You know, I, I didn't like it. And so 
I'm treating this as an opportunity to create sort of a, a there's a little bit of a hiding the vegetables in the, in the meatloaf, you know, about it where, you know, it's like, I want to teach these children these skills without them necessarily feeling like they're learning, right. um, kind of create these, these games. Uh, you know, and so, so that's kind of the appro- the current approach is to, to take these high level tools and interventions that are commonly used evidence based, you know, I, I'm a, my background in, in business and in investments, like, I believe very strongly in data and, you know, empirics. And so I want everything that I, that I do to, to start out being based on evidence based practices. And then, you know, I want to, I want to validate them. That's why we're doing the, the pilot programs now is to validate them and show like, are these effective? Are these helpful? Do therapists like them? Do their clients like them? So, right. right. So where are you doing these, um, these studies? Yeah. Doing? So, so most of, I'd say all of the, Pilots that we're doing so far are local to uh, Richmond, Virginia. That's just sort of for just logistical ease. Those, right. those are the people who I've been able to, to get, who, whose attention I've been able to get. The primary for the, the kind of commercial platform, the kind of examples that I'm using for primary end users are private practice clinicians and youth and family services organizations, and then finally schools. And so right now, uh, going into 20. 2020, I am speaking with about, I'd say about a half dozen private practice clinicians across a couple of different practices, and then two or three organizations, youth services organizations. A big focus of the work with youth youth services uh, that that I'm doing is with the um, sort of fostering population, because when I started this company a little bit over a year ago... I initially had a co-founder and a partner who was working with me on this. He was a a former foster child. He grew up in an abusive home and foster care system. And really the idea kind of generated out of a conversation we were having where when I finally got him to kind of hear me out on, you know, using VR technology for therapy, which he was, you know, understandably skeptical of, you know, he did, he did a little bit of the research and he said, you know, if I had had access to something like this when I was 12 years old, it could have changed the the next decade of my life. And so, you know, reaching out to organizations uh, that are working with, whether it's through residential programs or alternative schools, or just working with children who, you know, are in the foster care because there's such a high rate of trauma and just general mental health you know, issues with, with that population. So really um, everything from institutions to private practice clinicians, you know, admittedly, this is right now a one root VR right now is a one person operation. And, and that's something that hopefully, you know, once we kind of roll things out in 2020, I'll, I'll be able to grow that a little bit. So I'm going to start out, start out small, you know, um, I think we're going to have about, about a dozen to 15 kind of units out being tested with, you know, live with populations. And that's really exciting. It's also terrifying (laughs) because I've been working on it for a year and I I don't know, you know, what I'll hear, but you know, it's, it's exciting to kind of see this. Hopefully if one person tries one of these experiences and is able to gain a new tool that helps them, that's a success for me. So that's, that's kind of all uh, I'm, I'm baby steps starting small and, you know, trying to make every, every little bit of help that I can. Wow. Wow. I mean, I, I'm excited for you. I think people are going to be so excited to use this and you're going to help so many people. It's coming. It's coming. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. It takes Thank time. You. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I know this is going to, I mean, I have faith and I believe in your, in you and I believe in your product and I believe in um, what you're doing. And I, I think that's, you know, the more people you can rally behind you and um, show the best practices and you know, yeah. it's coming. Hey friend, want to be more comfortable while sitting on the therapy couch? I sure did and went looking for pants and tops that were soft, wrinkle resistant, and would match just about anything I already had in my closet. And now Zaya Active makes up about 80% of my wardrobe. Would you like to learn more? Head over to my site, lisamuster.com and click on the activewear tab. And don't think this is just for women. They have men's and kids' clothes too, and our family is loving the quality, and I am loving the price tag. So head over to my site to check it all out. Okay, so let me ask you this. If therapists out there want to yeah. see this, they want to talk to you more, what is the best thing for them to do? 
So, you know, while, while I did, you know, I did kind of, I hedged a little bit and said, I am, you know, kind of starting small. I mean, I am absolutely looking for therapists, organizations who are interested in, in piloting the technology and, and, and working with me. And so the, probably the best thing to do is to email me. So you can go to, go to our website. The website is rootvirtualreality.com, kind of all spelled out. Go to the website. There's a little contact form. You can, you know, fill that in there. Or if you just send an email to info at rootvirtualreality.com, you know, I, I, I am, have gotten just wonderful emails from, you know, clinicians, from parents, from all sorts of people. I try to respond. I don't get that many of them yet, you know, so it's, it's, it's easy for now, but I try to respond to all of them. But yeah, please re- reach out to me. Uh, I'm, I'm working on getting some more, don't really have a lot of kind of demo, you know, video material out and I'm going to be working on getting some of that out now. So, you know, would be happy to, to share demos and, you know, particularly, you know, I'm, I'm finding out more and more people are kind of having the, some of the headsets that the technology runs on. And to that extent, if, you know, people want to, want to sort of give it a demo, um, mm-hmm. I'm more than happy to do that. Another thing that's worth that's worth mentioning, and I, I'm forgetting about it because it's it's kind of secondary, but I'm actually also about to, in a, you know, hopefully, I don't know, maybe as soon as next week, launch a a smartphone app that is cool. basically a light version of it's sort of one of the experiences that we've built for the the VR headsets, and it allows users to kind of use a Google Cardboard, which is just sort of literally a cardboard VR headset that you can put your phone into, kind of get a taste for what the VR experiences are are like. But there are also sort of two non-VR modes that you can use with your phone. It's It's one of the guided imagery experiences. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll be releasing that within the next two or three weeks. And, and that will, okay. I think, give an opportunity for people to just kind of start to get a little bit of a feel for, for what we're doing yeah. and, and hopefully understand how we can, you know, how it might be being used in the, in the more, the kind of flagship commercial platform. That's really cool. I was hope I was hoping that was coming for you, like an app that folks can just use on their own without the guidance of a therapist, just they can download it and have the experience themselves. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's, you know, a big, um, there's a big component to, to what I'm doing, you know, also related in just increasing access, you know, so as I was doing the research, I've been fortunate to grow up in the suburbs of a relatively large, you know, metropolitan area. So I never personally experienced a a lack of resources when it came to getting help and needing help. But over the last two years, as I've been doing the research and going into Facebook groups and reading stories from parents who are saying, you know, I'm having to drive two hours one way to to get my child the resources that they need you know again i don't see this as being a, a platform that's going to that's going to solve the problem of having to having or wanting to to meet with a therapist but you know if if i can create tools people can use while they're you know sort of in the in the pitch i said you know we're expanding the therapy beyond the walls of the clinician's office you know so yeah. giving so much of cognitive behavioral therapy involves practice and homework, you know, to really use the the skills and to, to learn how to use them in real situations. And if I can create some tools that allow people to do that when they're on their own, you know, that, that I, I'm hoping that that will be something that will be really empowering for people as well. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, definitely. Will that, will, will that be a free app? I'm guessing. Or? It's going to be, it'll, it, it's going to be inexpensive, you know, like I'm th- maybe a dollar 99, mm-hmm. but it's going to, it's going to be, you know, it'll be a paid app. The, the plan is to kind of in, continue to roll out, you know, kind of add some experiences mm-hmm. to, but yeah, so, so the, the goal is to, you know, try to find a way to, to, to start getting a little bit of, of mm-hmm. revenue flowing yeah. and to kind of keep the bigger, the bigger picture going, but also make it, you know, something that is hopefully, you know, as accessible as possible. Are you, and this is kind of off subject. Are you familiar yeah. with, with the, the app waking up by Sam Harris? Uh, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. 
that's a really neat app. It's a meditation app and it's a, yeah. um, it's a subscription. And, um, okay. my husband got into it over a year ago and I've, I've been yeah. recently kind of getting into it, but he has not just like daily meditations, but he has lessons on there. So cool. he teaches you, I mean, it's just really cool. And it just gets me thinking about your app and like the different ways, yeah. different directions you could go, like what you could add to it to not, sure. you know, to make it, to bolster it up and make it more. Absolutely. Um, it's really cool. Yeah. If you get a chance to like, look at that, it's neat. Yeah, honestly, one of the one of the things that kind of started me down this this whole path of you know digital wellness tools uh, was when I discovered Headspace mm -hmm. about three or four years ago, mm -hmm. and I had wanted to learn to to meditate and practice mindfulness my whole life, but you know had no idea how to do it. Yeah. And Headspace was one of those things that just like it completely it taught me these skills and actually the way that that app was so effective at helping me learn skills that i now use outside of the app was a big inspiration for you know kind of some of the educational you know component of what i'm trying to do because i don't want i don't want to build i'm not using this technology to kind of build a place where people have to go to feel safe you know that's the last thing that i want them to do i don't want them to be you know kind of bound to the technology i want them to have the technology when they need it and when it's effective so that they can learn the skills to to use what they've learned when they don't have the technology and and you know eventually you know, heal, hopefully. Right. Oh, such good work. I'm so excited mm -hmm. for you and all the people you. are going to help. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's just for a little bit, talk about the pitch competition. Cause I've had yeah. some questions about like, what was my experience like? And I wanted, I've shared a little bit about, you know, how this came to be. Um, but your story is different than mine because you have been working with startup Virginia for a little bit, yeah. correct? Sure. Okay. Yep. Can you talk about like, how you found them, what that process was like, and and where you are sure. with them now, and it may a lot of people don't know what what that is probably. Yeah, yeah. So I'll give a, give a little bit of background. So Startup Virginia is a is a nonprofit in Richmond, Virginia, and they are they provide sort of a whole host of services to members, you know, startups, founders, entrepreneurs, and so there's a process, there's an application process to join, and they're they're focused on you know sort of you know potentially high growth uh, types of startups so there are a lot of tech startups and really just sort of growth oriented companies in, in general but they were they kind of came under my radar a couple of years ago when I was thinking about you know starting trying to, to do something and looking for resources and um, happened to happen to reach out to to them and reach out to someone who is who is related with them and at first just to get advice just to kind of say hey this is this thing I'm thinking about what do you think and and that sort of you know I was really fortunate that that just sort of turned into a relationship with Startup Virginia we got a membership about a year ago and I mean they're the the resources that we get through Startup Virginia are, are are really phenomenal. So you know, in addition to sort of having this, it's it's a it's an incredible building. It's it's an old you know more than a hundred year old six floor tobacco former tobacco warehouse that Capital One and Startup Virginia have worked together and have just renovated it into an absolutely gorgeous space. So you get access to this gorgeous space for, you know, for co-working, which is like in and of itself worth the, you know, worth the membership. But, but also there's just really amazing programming. So everything from weekly and monthly workshops on, you know, digital marketing and all these things that, that, you know, you need to know as a, as a startup founder and entrepreneur. And then also they have probably by now as many as 200 mentors who just volunteer office hours. So you can go in and, and talk to them. It's been a really incredible resource, you know, and, and, and they also, that's also where the, you know, that's, that's where we met, I guess, was at the, at the building there. And yeah, it's, it's just really phenomenal. And I, and I know that, you know, there are this, this model, you know, whether some people call it an incubator, some people call it, you know, an accelerator, this model of creating these, these resources and making them available to, you know, communities of founders are, you know, they exist everywhere. They're all over the nation in, in major cities. So, you know, I totally recommend looking for, for those resources because they're, they can be, you know, game changing. The, you know, the pitch competition in and of itself was, it was an interesting, I mean, obviously it was a wonderful experience for me, but it was an interesting experience for me because 
frankly, I'm an anxious person. You know, I, I, over the past years, I've been talking about my company and speaking more about it. I've gotten a lot more comfortable with public speaking, but you know, the, the format of the pitch competition, which was sort of a, you know, shark tank style, five minute pitch with five minute judge Q and a, I'd never done anything like that before. And even when, even when I applied for it, I applied for it for some reason I felt compelled to, to apply. I felt like I had to at least give it a shot. But I remember hoping as I hit submit, you know, kind of hoping that I wouldn't get selected. Um, just because I was just, uh, you know, I was already feeling the overwhelm of having to get something like that together. But that being said, you know, it's like the timing, the timing of it ended up being perfect for me because the company was at the point where I had just finished kind of building the early stage platform and finally had a product to show and was finally going to be going out into the world at large and starting to say, I'm here, I'm looking for partners, you know, and eventually I'm looking for investment. So I, just one of those things where I didn't want to do it, but I knew that I had to do it. So I applied, I got the exciting news that, you know, I was excited as a finalist and that's kind of when the, the serious work uh, you know, set in. And, you know, for me, it was a, there was a good three weeks uh, leading up to that where I was, I was a nervous wreck for, for a lot of it, just kind of trying to distill all of this information. And I was used to, you know, I'm used to talking about the company for 30. And if you can't tell I'm a talker, and, <laughs> but I was used to talking about the company for 30 or 45 minutes at a time to, to groups of people and like having to distill all that information mm -hmm. into five minutes was just incredibly overwhelming. You know, but I knew I, I knew I needed to do it. And as I had expected, it was just the experience, regardless of the outcome, just the experience of forcing myself to do the hard work to distill that five minute, um, you know, elevator pitch. Uh, has has paid off in just me having a better understanding of the vision, having a better understanding of the business model, and and being able to talk to people about what what I do. So, it was a really incredible opportunity. It was a really amazing experience, and you know, it was not was not an easy one. But in retrospect, I'm you know really really happy that that I did it. Yeah, and you rocked it. I could not tell that you'd never done that before. You, oh, you were great. You. No, you were fabulous. You. you were so smooth. You. you were so competent. You know, you just you did great, and you shared yeah. the vision and mission so so well in those five minutes. I was like, oh, I totally get what he wants to do now. Sure. You know, so you did great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and it was awesome. Like it was like you did fabulously. I mean, everybody did so well. And the other thing that was so neat was, you know, it was like. Every, so one thing that was a, that blew me away mm -hmm. was that when the pitch competition was opened up, it was opened up sort of as a very broad you mm -hmm. know platform asking for companies of all of all sorts. When when it came down to the five finalists, all five of yeah. the finalists were healthcare yeah. startups, and three of the five finalists mm -hmm. were focused on mental health. Yeah. Um, and so it was really amazing. It was a wonderful group of people, and it was just a, a great. Uh, a great experience and that's where we met and you know now we're here today so yeah. I know I know it really was a fun experience and I had a very similar process as you did like I got the email and I gotta be honest like I get the VCU alumni emails all the time and I'm like yeah you know they just you know I love right. them but it's been a long time since I went there but this <laughs> one I opened up and I was like what is this what is this a pitch competition and that caught sure. my attention I had entered a pitch competition here at University of South Carolina a couple of years ago for uh, app development and I got chosen. Yeah. So I got really yeah. excited. I was like, oh, yeah. I know how to do this. I know how to apply. Right. And um, I have very similar, like, I have to put this together. This is going to make me focus. And I, it was a very similar process. Like, well, it'll be good for me to go through because I'll have to boil it down to, I think, how many slides they were asking for. So it really helped yeah. me kind of get my idea on paper. So I knew it was a good experience yep. to just apply, but I had that right. same feeling of, Oh, I hope, I hope I don't get chosen. <laughs> I mean, I, right, I've right, never right. Done this before. I but um, yeah. yeah. And it was just like a wild fun ride. And um, I still it can't was. believe it's been almost two months since we were I know. freshmen. It was such a fun, such a fun weekend. And I'm so glad we connected and yeah, you're right. It's pretty amazing that all five were healthcare and then three were mental health. I think it just yeah. goes to show that, you know, so much out there research and best practices, you know, and new technologies. And um, we're always learning about human development and our brains and science. I mean, it's just fascinating um, 
really feel like this is just the beginning for you. I, I, I have a, I have a gut feeling that this is going to take you in a lot of different directions for, um, helping people. I really do not just yeah, well, health, maybe you. other things. Yeah. Well, thanks for saying that. I mean, I think as you know, we, we talked about this, you know, a little bit at the pitch competition and, you know, it is definitely, um, it's, it's not always easy. And at times it's, it's easy less frequently than it is difficult. Um, particularly like, I think both of us reflected on the fact that we're, we're kind of running these things as, as one person, you know, operations and it's a roller coaster, you know, it's, it's an emotional roller coaster and there are no guarantees. Right. And, you know, every, every day and every week, you know, is, is a bit of, you know, some ups and some downs, but I think that, you know, I am, I am feeling good to be finally doing work that is both personally gratifying and that I'm enjoying, but also I really just from the small amount of feedback that I've been getting, people are saying that, you know, it's helping. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's, what's really amazing to me. And, and, and 2012, I think is just going to be, there's going to be an element of, of surrealness to it. Uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, I was just thinking that, you know, once I start these pilot programs, I think there are going to be as many as, you know, two or 300 people who are going to be using this. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know. It's 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 amazing to me to think that you know maybe it'll only be one or two of those people, but like something that I built, you know, with with my bare hands could could help somebody else. Yeah. So you know, and I, I think I imagine you you know are starting to to feel that with your mm -hmm. with your show now. You're you're on what almost thirty or yeah. or thirty mm -hmm. plus you know episodes, and I know that you're you know, kind of listenership is, is growing and you're getting reviews where people are like, I'm not even, you know, I'm not even a therapist, but I, but I love this. And so, yeah. And, 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 you know, from the, the pitch competition, I mean, hearing about what you're doing with the, the continuing education is just, you know, it's, it's just brilliant, you know, meeting people where they are with information that they want and need and is relevant and is modern and is fun and putting, putting some of the enjoyment back in the education part of, you know, the, the continuing edu education is like such a phenomenal, just, it, it's a gift to these people who, you know, like therapists, the job, I can't imagine mm -hmm. being a therapist, you know, I, I can't imagine <laughs> just the, you know, the weight that, that I imagine that, that as a profession that, that holds. Mm -hmm. And I have so much r respect and gratitude towards therapists and the fact that, you know, you're, the work that you're doing is, you know, going to hopefully help lighten some of that load and, and, and bring the joy, you know, back, or at least amp the joy up is really, really phenomenal. So I'm, I'm super Aww. excited for everything you're doing as well. Well, thank you. Oh my God. You just gave me all the warm feels. Thank you. <laughs> you're oh, you're so, I mean, really that's, you deserve I mean, it. Yeah. thanks. You just, you picked up on it at the pitch, you know, you know, you got, you get it. Like, you know, yeah. where my heart is with us and yeah, it's been so fun and it's hard to believe for me, it's been a year. Um, since yeah. I had the idea. So, you know, I just want to encourage everybody out there. Like if you have an idea and you're thinking about, is this something that I should pursue? And the things that I'm hearing David say are, are similar for me. If you're, if it's authentic and congruently aligned with what you're passionate about and where your values are, and you can't stop thinking about it, you know, you're laying awake at night and you're wondering, will this work? You gotta, you gotta take a chance and you have to take a risk and, you know, start flushing it out, start talking to people. And, you know, what probably kept me, well, not with this idea, but in the past was, well, people think this is a silly idea, you know? Yeah. So I used to worry a lot about what other people would think, but you know, the longer I do this work and the more stories I hear from people and the more people I encounter. And, you know, I was like, I know, I know myself as a woman, I know myself as a therapist and I know what I want to see and hear in the therapy right. world. And I want to build that community. And if people like that, they'll come join us. And if not, they'll find another community to go and be a yeah. part of. So, and I love it. I think that's, you know, that's just the journey. Part of the journey of the um, entrepreneur is, you know, sure. that doubt and that, but yet that yeah, perseverance absolutely. and the values yeah. and that congruency and all that stuff. So yeah. this has just been so great. And I am really, really hopeful that some of the folks listening will reach out and learn more. And I remember at the pitch, 
I'm kicking myself now. And, Bill, and Billy and I both afterwards were like, we did not take you up on this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you were like, if anybody wants to come up and put the goggles on, because you were like, how how can, the question from one of the judges was like, how can we support you or what will you use the money for or something? And yeah. um, you said, just come up here and, and try the experience. Yeah, and I'm yeah. kicking myself that we didn't. But next time I'm in Richmond, I'm going to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, hopefully, so as soon as this, this app will be out in, you know, less than a month. And again, that won't be the the full experience, but it'll be a, be a teaser or, or at least a taste. And so that's one way that I'm hoping that sort of a much broader audience can, can start to just at least conceptualize of, okay, like, Hey, now I, now I kind of understand what this is like and, and, and hopefully put the pieces together and say, Oh, like, I can I can see how this might might be helpful. Yeah. So that's that's another way. But yeah, I mean, talking to people and and getting you know right now just getting the word out and 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 hopefully getting you know getting people excited. Mm -hmm. um, if I can get people excited enough to kind of talk to their their friends and their colleagues and you know that is that's it's it's such a crit critical part of this stage in this early stage of, of the business which you know it's one of the reasons I'm, I'm thrilled to be you know to have a platform like this yeah. to talk about it today so thank you so much for for having oh, yeah. me oh you're welcome i can't wait for this episode to come out and i'm really hopeful that you'll get some great interest and excitement yeah. from other therapists who see the value in this i have a couple of folks off the top of my head that i know work with adolescents and teens and I'm already thinking I'm going to you know hook you up with sure. um, one of my therapist friends out in LA she she might be really interested in this yeah. um and she's cool you guys you guys yeah. really hit it off well awesome well is there anything else that you want to share before we end the interview it's been so great yeah no I mean I I don't think so I am you know I, I'm here I love connecting with people I mean that's honestly my favorite part about about this job mm -hmm. the last three or more months has kind of been me sitting in front of a, a computer like coding and programming mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. which is necessary but but I don't love it right but yeah so like anyone who has any any questions or any thoughts like I would love to love to speak with you even if it's purely educational you know so much of what I do now is just helping people understand grasp the concepts and and, and understand how it's being used you know I'm happy to share there's been a, a lot of research I'm happy to share that that research but yeah you know I want to be I want to be a, a resource for people you know as much as I can can. Yeah. Uh, and I'm always happy to do that. So. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks again for being on the show and I look forward to you, the future and yeah. seeing you just like, you know, really take this far. Cause I have, I have a good feeling for sure. Yeah, no, thanks so much for, for having me. And uh, yeah, it's really it's special having met through the competition when we're kind of both at, you know, a very similar, you know, stage about a year in and, and uh, I just look forward to being able to kind of watch us both grow together and and be able to support each other and and just you know I think that there's there's so much good that can come from from this work and so it's it's really exciting to kind of have those those peers out there who you know I can you know I can cheer on and at the same time kind of feel like you know they're cheering me on as well so that's super super important and and I'm so excited and grateful for technology that I don't have to be in Richmond. That's right. That's <laughs> don't right. Don't be home. I can, you know, we can do this anytime. So exactly. Yeah. this has been really cool. So thanks again, David. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that wraps up another episode of the therapy show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamustard.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank you.